probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. I remember the day I got this, uh, I'd just been fired from Travel Channel. Oh, fun. Yeah. And they built it. I went and got fired from Travel Channel. I went and did Letterman. And I came back and I was like my first day in here. Had a coffee and I was like, yeah, are we rolling? Yeah. And I was like, it was the best. It was one of the best days of my life. I love this man cave. Like we just bought a new house. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to not have this. It's such a great space to come in. Wait, where do you live? Do you live out? You live uh, at- Long Beach. Oh, for real? Yeah. I always thought you lived in like uh, in like Ontario or something. Did you used to live out there? No, but I used to do. I used to perform out there so much that people thought I lived out there. Can I tell you the first time I ever saw you? Mm. Premium blend, probably nineteen ninety nine. Wow! You were doing warm up. I was doing premium, maybe two thousand one. You were doing warm up, but you were you. I think you had already gotten a half hour from them and i was doing the next night and i came out just to see the room Mm -hmm. and you were doing warm-up and because you were doing warm-up i assumed you were just a young comic yeah you were already murdering and i went back and i was like i've done this twice by the way and this is a good totem because the other person i did this to is dave Chappelle. (laughs) and i went bro you are really funny man you got to stick with it you were so buzzy you went Thank you very much. (laughs) I assumed. And then I said, who is that? And they're like, oh, that's Gabe. He's doing a half hour. And I was like, wait, what? I was like, I thought he was just doing a warm up. And they're like, I think he's doing that as a favor. He's like fucking around. Like he's a gangster. And I was, you destroyed so hard that whoever went on to do their premium blend couldn't follow you. Do you remember doing that? Oh yes, I re- I remember that very well. Uh, Rick Mill Productions. That was uh, Rick Mill Productions. Rick Mill Productions. Yeah, I remember because uh, that was the last time I got to work with Freddie Soto. Was uh, Freddie did a uh, one of those premium blends? Dude, tell me about Freddie Soto. I-, I have a subtle obsession with him. Like, I never knew him. I've never heard a bad word about. And well, everyone will talk bad about the dead, but I've never heard a bad word about him. And, and he made me laugh. And he changed the way I did stand up a tad bit because his dad, his joke about his dad mm-hmm. wasn't regardless, dirt, regardless, hey, regardless. <laughs> oh, my favorite part. Oh, if I was one of your bodies drinking beers, <laughs> I, dude, yeah. I, what was he like? You know, I never got a chance to just hang out one on one with him. It was uh, he was one of those guys. He was always hanging out with uh, Mencia and with and with Pablo, and they, they had their their tour going together. And every now and then, I'd get a chance to just talk to them. But it was, I was always talking to them in, in groups, so I yeah. never really had that one on one. I actually had a better relationship with his parents because after he passed, I got I got really close to his. You know, we did a fundraiser, and I met his family. His family's from El Paso, and they reminded me a lot of my you know family members. And so I got really close with his dad and with his mom and, and, and everybody so it was one of those like wow uh so i'd hear stories through them about you know in el paso he was just a young kid and hanging out i got to, they, uh, his dad took me to his favorite bar it was like a king's bar and i think it was called the king's bar there in el paso really? but just just super cool uh i saw his i saw where he grew up i saw the house he grew up in and and got to know his family uh so that's how i got to know freddie oh that's cool yeah i i he, i watched his I watched he my he must have done a half hour in like two thousand when Dane did it yeah. later. And I man, that guy made me laugh so fucking hard. The Mexican comedy scene is something like people don't really like like they don't see it as something uh, the way that they, they see the the say maybe like like the alt scene or the black scene, but it's legit. Uh you know what? Uh, I wanna say that it it really started popping off. About twenty years ago, uh, yeah. there was a few different shows that were that were hitting. Uh, there was a, a, a show that a, a guy named Jeff Valdez put out. I want to say it was called Comedy Compadres, and they taped it over at Universal Studios. And then another show came out called Que Loco, and then there's a Que Locos, and then there was a local comedy jam, and there was a bunch of you know there was a bunch of different TV shows that were that were popping off that were uh, highlighting you know Latinos at the time. Yeah, I guess it's and, Latinos, but because like uh, uh, Pablo is a Mexican. Pa- uh, Francisco? Yeah, Pablo's. Pablo's like, uh, no, he's not. Uh, what Colombian is he? He's, or he's like, uh, he's got, he's got something in him. So, yeah. I, I don't remember what it is, <laughs> but he's got something in him. He's got, you know. It's crazy. I remember. I mean, like, it was one of those things. Like, you, you knew the alt scene, like as a, just like a, starting in New York. You knew the alt scene. You knew like the the, the urban scene. Mm-hmm. And then coming out here, I remember going like, I remember 
because it was Monday nights at the Laugh Factory. Monday nights at the Laugh Factory was Latino night at the Laugh Factory, and Jamie Masada gave the the brown people one night out of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember you did. I remember this is like people will have a hard time understanding this, but you were famous before you were famous. Like you were famous. You, I remember you did two weekends in Ontario. I remember going like, what the, like, who does two weekends? Like you did one weekend and then you did the weekend after it and they were all sold out double shows. And this is before Last Comic Standing. Yeah. Like you were famous before Last Comic Standing. Last Comic Standing I, I think had- is when people would go, would say that's where I met Gabe, but you were you were the one of the you. I think you were easily the biggest name to ever do Last Comic Stand. I, I had a career going by the time I hit Last Comic Stand. That's what I meant to say. But uh, you were fucking famous. You were selling theaters, or probably arenas. At that time, it was all about the improvs. I, I could not get enough of the clubs. My really? uh, my manager, everybody was like, "Dude, it's, I think we should go to a theater." I'm like, yeah. "But I like the clubs." It's like, but I mean, it was it was an obsession. I was doing a a show Wednesday night, Thursday, two Friday, three Saturday to Sunday, and then I'd add a Monday. And then we'd do that same rotation the following week. So I, I want to say it was something like 13, 14 shows. When did that start for you? Oh, man, I don't even remember. Uh, after you, when, after let's, 2000. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. So when did you when did you start comedy? I started in uh, April 10th, 1997. That was my official start date, April 10th, 97. Okay, so you've been doing almost 25 years? 20, what is it, 23? This year, next year, it'll be 23. Where did you start? In, did you start? Long Beach. In, is that where you grew up? Yeah, uh, I was born in San Diego and then just little by little moved up north with my mom until we got to Long Beach. And uh, it was pretty cool that I got to start in my city. You know, I was at a little yeah. dive bar and uh, a friend of mine pushed me up on stage. They needed an MC and I just made fun of him and did maybe three, four minutes of character voices. And 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 I got the bug that day. It was just like, oh, my God, this is this is awesome. I got my first paid gig the following week. There was a guy in the crowd. He goes, hey, can you come back next week and do that again? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and that was it. I was just a nervous ball of energy. And I just, all I did was character voices and impressions. That was my whole gig at, at you know, when I first started. Really? Mm-hmm. And so then you started and then how soon did you start? How soon until he- did you started headlining? You're one of these anomalies. Like you're so naturally funny. Like l- a lot of guys, I think you look at like, uh, say like the Dimitri Martins who are great writers, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, and then I think myself, I, I don't know if I don't, I think I'm naturally funny, but I'm not, you are, you are go up on stage with no material, but still murder funny. Does that make sense? Because on paper, I suck. No, 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 no. Your material, you're one of the best storytellers out there. You have an ability in, story, ability in storytelling that I don't have where you can add so much flavor in a story. I'm a super student of like watching the way people grow their hours mm-hmm. and your hours you've gone to a place where you can take a story and add so much flavor inside the story that mm-hmm. I, I don't have that ability. I, I'm, I wish I did. I really sincerely wish I did. But a friend what, of mine said that I was like that dude from that movie, big fish. Like, man, come on. Your stories are just so out there. Come on, dude. This, did this dude, really happen? I'm, come fucking, on, dude. I'm the same fucking, did, someone did said you, the same did you thing. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, my daughters, I have these list of stories that I've told my daughters and they're like, <laughs> They're like, that didn't happen. And I was like, the fuck it didn't. What are you talking about? I was like, I won the Florida State Regatta. <laughs> I got bit by a bat one time. So then coming up, did you get did you get swept up into like the uh Mencia, George Lopez? Did, did you get into that group? So um when I came around, I was like I said, it was 97. Um I started emceeing uh wherever i could because that's that's basically the ex- extent of my you know i only had like 15 minutes at the time yeah. and so they sent me on the road doing holes in the wall uh, bars dive bars the only comedy club that opened up the door for me was a club in el paso called the comic strip i don't know if you played it or not mm-hmm. but next thing i know uh, i got offered opportunities to uh to open up for a few people and uh lopez i opened for george lopez once one time which I, uh, I think is pretty much you can put it on your resume going that's how good i am that's well you know what uh it was it, it was it was a good time because uh his uh his former manager is now my manager one of my managers oh yeah 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 and uh that night it was in fresno it was in fresno i want to say at the williams Royan theater and i went up before him and i had oh. one of the greatest sets of my life i mean i came in there 
you got to figure. I was I was throwing sound effects. I was throwing in sp- Spanish. I was throwing in all kinds of local references. Uh, See, the thing is, that I had been to Fresno so many times. I knew where all the you know, because I go and I hang out with people. So it's not like you know, I just talk about the hotel across the street. I was naming the the taco truck on the corner of Fifth and Elm, and they're like, "Oh my God, he knows about the taco truck on Fifth and." Elm. I would do that every city I'd go to, and so I did that in a theater right before. George and I could see in the corner and I saw George and he gave me the wrap it up. Like I didn't get the light. I got the look yeah. from him and he gave me you're the, done. the, yeah, you're done. And, uh, the roar when I got off was insane. I'll never, it was one of the greatest moments for me. And <laughs> his manager came up to me. He goes, he goes, you did really good. Really good. I was like, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was just all happy. And, and, uh, yeah, I says, so any chance I can do another one? He goes, ah, yeah, no. That was it. That was the, that was the official. Nope. You're, you're, uh-uh. nope. Done. But, uh, I remember when, uh, when Mencia and Lopez were doing, had their feud back and forth. Yeah. Uh, Lopez showing up to the, the laugh factory and, and choking out Carlos. And, oh, yeah. Got, uh, 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 yeah. Dude, it was, it was, it was one of those where, he, Unfortunately, Mencia had a, a reputation that didn't come out until later on about the yeah. whole thing. And I, I think that if he would have just been nicer, you know, not not to because he was never mean to me, but I, I heard a lot of the stories from people and I'm like, yeah, being nice goes a long way. And I think people would have been a little bit more forgiving about certain things, especially the way you, you treat other comics or you, if you bump someone or you just show up and there's not that, you know, yeah. Or you run, you're only supposed to do a 15 minute set and now you do 45 or an hour and you just burn freaking like four comics. You know yeah. what I mean? So stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, it, watching the whole thing between Lopez and uh, Mencia, I was sitting in between them in San Antonio at the uh, Latino Laugh Festival. And I remember I'm sitting like right here and I got, I got Mencia on, on, my, uh, on my left and Lopez on my right. And they're just talking about golf. It was insane. They're just talking about golf and yeah, bro, we're gonna tee off and blah blah blah. And Lopez is like, yeah, cabrón, I got a nine iron, and, and they're t- discussing this whole thing about golf. And I'm just like, this is so weird. <laughs> and then one of them got up to leave, and I remember they immediately started talking shit about it. <laughs> and I'm just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Lopez looked at me because uh, we had done a showcase together. He looked at me, and goes, "Hey, you're funny, but I need you to know something. I followed you." Don't forget that I followed you. And I'm like, uh, yeah. what, what What? was that? <laughs> Don't Try forget. It. I followed you. I was like, okay, yeah. Sure thing. But I didn't I didn't know that it was uh that there was people that didn't get along. I didn't know that there was these these uh rivalries or or cliques, you know, because I was always out on the road. So if you're not around to be involved and in, and in, and in, and looped into that, you don't know that you're not part of this group or that group or that group, uh, or that this guy doesn't get along with this guy, or you know. That's so funny. I, 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 I never, I like I, you're, I feel like I'm a lot more like you in that I'm a road guy too. Like I, I've never really, I, I never really had like a group until, until like older, older. I think I, I started when podcasting started, mm-hmm. I started hanging out in the city more, but like I was out in the road my whole, I felt more of a connection to guys like I don't know if you're gonna know this name, but Jay Medicine Hat. Do you remember that guy? Oh, guys, yeah, guys like that, or the because like, that's or, or the Chinaman. The chi- yeah, yeah, people that will never be out here, but man, out in the Midwest, they murder, they murder, murder. Yeah. And I, I felt like that was my group because I didn't. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, I'm, I, you know, but yeah, I, 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 that fucking, it's crazy to see the the beef and not be attached to it, and then, but then by proxy, you get thrown into it. Like, I think everyone just assumes I hate Mencia because I'm friends with Rogan. But I met Carlos one time. He seemed pretty nice. Yeah. But it, again, it's it's one of those things where by association. Yeah. By association. So, you know, people bring up, hey, what what's going on with George? Well, I don't know. I haven't seen him in 15 years. I don't. We I don't... met him one time. That's it. Yeah. The only thing I ever heard about George Lopez is he did a fake shot on stage and they found out about it, I guess. And. Ah, oh, that's weird. Uh, I don't, I don't know him to 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 fake a shot unless there was something going on where he has kidney mm. or whatever. And so he did a fake shot on stage, and they found they they caught him, and the whole room booed him, like just oh. And I was like, oh, never done a fake shot on stage in my entire fucking life. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did one time. I did a I did a show with a tell, and I did a real shot and a tell at the time was like always do. He, by the way I'm, insomniac days right yeah no but Attell would always still he would shoot coffee never drank on stage 
he would shoot cold coffee and say it was Jaeger. Mm. And I did a real shot and he got done. And he goes, was that a real shot? And I went, yeah. And he was like, ah, I wouldn't do that. And I was like, wait, you don't do real shots? And he was like, no, it's cold coffee. I was like, oh my God, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> Is there no Santa Claus too? Did you ever do the Miami improv back in the day? Yes. Speaking of shots. Oh God. <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell you how bad I drank on that stage. Uh I uh people were sending shots. Yeah. And it was already like hour three. I was up there for three hours and people were sending up shots and we're just I'm just sharing stories about whatever. At this point, yeah. people are just hanging out to hang out. Yeah. And the show's uh, over. If you yeah, want to show's over. Yeah. I, I basically said it too. Like, hey, uh, you got your checks, everything. If you want to leave, you can leave. If you want to hang out? This is a hangout. Yeah. So the expectations and it was a lot more relaxed, but the shots were coming. And at some point I did the shot and then it hit me. It was that, that one shot where it's, you just cross the line Yeah. and then you get the gurgle and then, and I threw up back into the, the, the glass and I kept going. I kept going. She I'm was there. She saw right it. Yeah, she was like, I'm going to gag right now. <laughs> threw up back in the glass. So anyway, oh man, I put it down. I like, yeah, put the glass on oh the Oh my stool. God. Are you gagging, Holston? <laughs> Sorry. That is fucking rough. <clears throat> yeah, I like, I, I love, I miss that club in a weird way. It was a rough club for me. And the, the, the structure of it was so awkward because it's like you come out the door and then the room is divided in half because there's a giant pole in the room. Yeah. You know, pillar. Big, yeah, they could, see, they could see seven people in the middle of the club and then 200 on one side and 150 on the other yeah, side. You're it like, was so just, ugh. I mean, I got great memories there. I remember yeah, OJ used to hang out there all the time. Really? OJ used to hang out there all the time. Um, what's his name? Joel, uh, the owner yeah, of the Joel, club. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'd always pop in. He'd always pop in and have different, you know, dates. What was the first celebrity that came to one of your shows? Oh, that's a good question. You must you know, have huge I, people coming to your shows now. Um, or for the past, at least the past I've had seven come years. To the shows, but I, I couldn't remember the first person that came out. Who's the first person that saw you as funny that we that you looked up to that you're like, shut the fuck up? Like, you think I'm funny? Like, because I, I don't know. If, I, I don't know if you're like me, but I I know I do well on stage. But I'm super. I don't believe in myself. Believe it or not, Carlos Mencia. Because we were doing, I was doing the Latino Laugh Festival, and again, yeah. he was he was there. He was hosting. And uh, I remember the introduction. He was like, he brought me up on stage. And he's like, all right, this next fucker coming up. He's like, you know, when uh, when you're at the office, and you've been working there a long time, right? And it took you years to learn how to use the facts and how to do this and how to do that. And then that one asshole shows up and he just knows how to do everything. Day one, <laughs> that's this fucker. Give it up. for <laughs> And I was like, okay <laughs> you know he was really cool about about giving me props and stuff which I, I i thought that was really nice and pablo was also another one really you know he told me he says hey man because i opened up for pablo once yeah once, once. <laughs> and uh You're, i would never want you to open for me i would never in a million fucking years you're just i remember seeing you at dublin's one night and it was just thunder that was back when like dane ruled the roost yes yeah I, I don't think dane gets enough credit i was having a conversation last night about dane and, and the the impact he had on comedy and and just the the new generation because you know he was the one that showed everybody how to market yourself in a whole different way a way that that would draw numbers that that could never be drawn before in the past yeah you know what i mean and it was, it was one of those like i was blown away when uh he took over MySpace, and then by the time I decided to jump on MySpace, everybody was going over to Facebook, and so I jumped ship to Facebook. And but I, I studied him. I said a lot of people, you know, they hated on him. They said, "Oh, he's too this or that with the colleges," and that. he was a genius, and he was ahead of his time for for just being able to do that and and catch lightning in a bottle and run with it. Yeah, and I was I was very I studied him close. I mean, I you know not as far as the comedy, but I studied his business. Yeah, who who do you think is your class of comics that you started with? Like, if you like had to say that, because I always put you in Dane's class. I, I always thought you and Dane would kind of start together, but that. But I think now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm probably off. Uh, I think Dane Dane has a couple years on me. Yeah, because you. I remember showing up to L.A. and going to Dublin's, and you were already locked into that group. Just just. Freaking Jay 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 Davis still texts me. <laughs> 
<laughs> come, come on, you want to come on to a spot, dude? I'm in Des Moines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I tell him, I go, dude, I'm booked out until like July, yeah. and he'll still send me messages. Hey, man, I just want to see if you want to come by the club tonight. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it, man. But I'm, you know, I'm somewhere where it's freaking below zero Fuck. trying to make Eskimos laugh. Yeah, when I came out, it was like you, Ralphie, Dane, mm -hmm. were all the guys that hadn't <clears throat> hadn't popped like on TV or movies or anything. Mm -hmm. But I mean, just if you saw, it, I still remember. I remember I went to Dublin's and it was, uh, I want to say it was Felipe, you, I think the lineup was Felipe, you, Dane, and then they're like, I can put you up after Dane. And in my head, I was like, oh, I can probably follow Dane. I'll go up after Dane. And then I've never, I'd never seen Felipe before. And he fought, I remember going like, who the fuck is this? Like, I thought he was going to bomb. And they were like, oh, he works with Gabe. And then, and I was like, oh, fuck, Gabe's on this. And then you went up murdered and i was like okay i can follow dane he won't be able to follow that and then dane murdered and i was like i'm out i was like i'm going to get drunk downstairs fuck this vince vaughn's in the room god yeah that you guys Freaking were like doubles. just it was like it was like do you ever feel insecure about your act like like i'm always insecure but are you ner but do you ever like do you ever go like oh, i don't want to go up tonight i got nothing to say like I, I feel like that all the time but i feel like you have like I feel like you have so much. I've always felt this way about like guys like you. You have so much material in your head that you, you haven't even worked out that you're like, oh, I could try that tonight. Do you feel like, is? I, I love being around clubs. Like if I could be at a club every night, I would. Uh, but there are some times that I definitely like I want to go up, but I'm like, uh, because I do have that where I'm like, I don't know. Like, God, I don't I don't, so I don't want to go. I don't want to go up there right now. And and. You know, I, I haven't really figured out how I'm going to do this or it just, yeah, but believe me, you know, like I got a staple show coming up. I still don't know the, the material I'm going to do yet. And I'm like, I got three shows to so work that you, out. Do you get nervous? About I'm, like I'm nervous. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, holy, okay. Cause I've been working on this show, but I haven't had time to go and, and do, do stand up. Yeah. Cause your brain switches when you get into production, you get into production brain where all your jokes are about your TV show. Mm -hmm. And then when now, your, now when, I got to flip, I got to flip it. I got uh two shows to tomorrow night so i can work on a on the set there but i'm yeah i'm very insecure about it. i'm like all right how do i start uh where where do i uh how do i end it yeah, as long as i know how to start and how to end i, yeah. I just, just got to work out those two if yeah. i know that those two are, are locked in then the rest will just kind of work itself out and i'll eventually blend them when's your when's your staple set on show uh end of the month end of the month what's uh, that feel like it's awesome. It's an incredible feeling. The uh, first time I got to play it, when I walked out there, I'm just like, oh, my God. And you can see all the, the Lakers banners up in the rafters, you know, and that it, it'll hit you. You're just like, whoa, because I've played some arenas before, but Staples is Staples. That's that's our Madison Square Garden over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't even think about it that way. I think for us, it's the Staples Center. It's like, holy fuck. What are the, who like you, Kevin Hart? Yeah, uh, Trevor Hart, uh, Trevor Hart, Trevor, <laughs> Trevor <laughs> Noah. <laughs> no, there's too Kevin many black Hart, people. Trevor, Mix them into me. one. Yeah, put them into one. Uh, Trevor Noah played it last week. I got to go to a show. Yeah, oh, yeah? he had a great turnout. Yeah, it was packed. Um, there's a few guys that are out there doing arenas now. Uh, Sebastian is one of them. Uh, Joe Coy. Joe Coy has two shows at, at the forum Don't coming even up. Start me with Joe Coy. Uh oh. Did you see his fucking video this morning? Oh well, most of the videos he was sending you were from the set. He was he was doing my TV show and he's like. Yeah, look what I sent him, and I'm like, oh my god, dude, he's he's someone that really he's he's having fun, which I think is awesome. He inspires me to just go like, fuck it, fuck it, have fun while you're out there. Like, he's really. How when did you meet Joe? Oh man, about 20 years ago. I remember Joe Coy when he had hair, hope, happiness. <laughs> he, was, he was working at a bank. He was working at a bank and he had another job. And and uh, believe it or not, I tried to take Joe Coy on the road years ago. Yeah. And he was like, man, look, I just had this kid and, you know, I got to be around and this and this and that. Thank you. I mean, you know, he was hysterical back then. Who have you, who are the guys you've taken on the road? You've, you've set people up. I mean, I've taken a few people on the road. My biggest, my big claim to fame was uh, taking Trevor Noah on the road for a year, you oh, know? Wow. And then, and then I was like, Hey, look at release him. And then, you know, not saying I, I was responsible for any of that. I mean, no, but we there's, knew there's we knew lot. how talented he was. I went I went on the road with Jay Moore. Jay Moore and I don't speak anymore, but uh, but I will I will always say that like I learned a great deal. I mean, immeasurable amount of how this business works, how to work a crowd, how to read a crowd. Mm -hmm. I learned so much from him, 
I also learned stuff not to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably my, my, my biggest lessons was like watching because he was young. I mean, Jay was tw- 33 when I think he was popping. Mm. And when he did, uh, what was it, McGuire? <sighs> Jerry McGuire? Did you ever see the outtake? No. It's the most genius thing ever. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, sp- I, I understand that Jay probably is not comfortable with me talking anything about him at all. But I will say this, and <clears throat> I don't really give a fuck. It's what it's what made his movie career was he had this one, you know, the scene where Jerry Maguire is trying to get all his uh, yeah, all, of, all, all the, the clients, yeah, yeah, and they're all on the phone, mm-hmm. and Jay's on this other line going, "Hey, do you remember that prostitute in Houston? Do you know her name? I do. It's Brenda. That's my job." <laughs> that was one improv take with him and. <clears throat> whoever that is donald what should we call it <laughs> they just keep handing him phones and he just improv for like you, it's really i mean chill bump inspiring he improv for like 10 minutes and at the end he has a deer in headlight look and he looks at cameron crow and he's like was that good and everyone in the room's like that was fucking amazing cameron crow grabbed that clip and sent it to all the directors of movies that jay was out for and they put him in everything. They're like, this is the next movie star. It was such an amazing, fu- it really is one of the most amazing. I remember watching it. It was on the uh, on the extras mm-hmm. and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, he was, uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from Jay. We'll end it there. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Comedy beef is hey, so You know? <laughs> It sucks. Be- like, I just want to be nice, man. Just yeah. hey, be cool. Be cool. Because you have like it's it's weird because even we talk shit off these mics very freely, like and so to get and that's what podcasting was when we started was just talking, talking shit. shit. Yeah, just talking shit. It's the reason Jay and I don't speak. <laughs> talk too much shit. Oh uh, yeah, I was like <laughs> I was a kid. I'd get high on a podcast and be like, "You want to know what really happened?" Oh <laughs> fuck. <laughs> But we're here now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was the first big purchase you made? Oh, here we go. Um, I bought a uh, <laughs> I bought a an H two Hummer right when it when or right when it came out, I, I and rem- I was still living in an apartment. I remember this car. I saw you pull up at the Comedy Magic store in that car. Yeah, that thing was so obnoxious. It was huge and just you know. Uh, I lived in an area where, like I said, I lived in an apartment. Yeah. And so <laughs> they thought I was a drug dealer because nobody had that car. And they, yeah. you know, I'd pull up in the front and I'd park it. And they're like, you know, he's doing drugs. He's doing something. What's he up to? <laughs> and that's that's where my head was at. I was 25 years old. I had just made a bunch of money. And uh, let me go be stupid for a minute. So I did my whole thing with the big car. I, I bought two Hummers. At one point, I had two Hummers. And then I put rims and I did all the stupid shit you do when you're young and you just, you come into some money and you, oh, I want all of it. You know, I want the TVs and the dashboard. I want the, the PlayStation in the back with the guitar hero. And I, it was, I didn't need any of it, but I was, I was excited. I was, I was a kid and I'm just like, wow, let me have fun with this. Yeah. I miss that. I miss that. Cause now I'm like, I get some money and I'm like, yeah, I got to put that towards retirement or I got to invest in some, you know, <laughs> I think there's, we have the same there's business. There's these CBD companies opening up. Because, you know. <laughs> I think we have the same business manager. <laughs> I'm fucking, oh. You know, I, I, you're, I think we do have Actually, the same. Actually, we do have the same PTD. Do you know who else has our same business manager? Uh, there's a few comics. Yeah, Sebastian. Uh, yeah, and Dunham. Ah. Oh, we're all under that click. Oh, I shit on Dunham last night on stage. Oh, what happened? I don't know. Okay. It was, it was, a, it was a roast for Steve Marmel and Judy brown oh wow okay. judy marmel are you managed by them yeah i'm managed by judy okay yeah and uh <laughs> that sounds like a question that was about to talk shit too you're like oh no 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 no, no 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 um no and so and i said something about i don't know i said something about dunham i got a text this morning they were like wow you really lit up dunham last night and i was like don't remember that i was fucking drunk i didn't know i was supposed to go on stage um but yeah i i, I look at purchases like that now when I was younger, where I was like, I can, what the fuck was I thinking? And now you, now I'm trying to save every fucking penny. But your splurge is 
Now oh. I invest in in like a classic Volkswagens. Yeah, your so at is... least if you know I buy them, they're they're worth more a year later. So how did that how did that start? I started collecting cars uh, after I hung out with Jay Leno. I saw his garage and and I'm like, what, dude? And he goes, you know, and have fun. And I'm like, wow, okay. Yeah. I uh, his car guy became my car guy. I said, hey, I'm looking for a Volkswagen bus. Next thing I know, but why Volkswagen buses? My first car. Really? Yeah. It was my first car and it was just one of those like oh man it'd be cool to have my first car again yeah and so i went for it and co- i didn't even know they were collectible at that level i just i just thought they were cool they and really then i cool. learned and then I, next thing i know i'm watching all these auctions and every year the volkswagen bus is the one that's you know it goes for the most money really yeah and then you know i, I started uh hanging out with people that were really into these buses and i met the the guru of uh of restoration and this guy just he he makes a work of art so i try not to drive them but they're all drivable and they all have amazing just engines and chassis and just they're 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 ready for the road really so so what do you look for when you when you when you're looking to buy one are you just looking to buy any of them at this point i just tell him hey this is the year that i want the color and just the layout of it and he he will find a body and he'll paint it accordingly What's, so the, what, what's your scratch. favorite year? Um, anything pre-1967. And there's a couple years in there where like the lights in the front are bigger or smaller. Bumpers are a little bit different. You know, just little, little tiny regular person wouldn't catch it. But, you know. Really? Yeah. How many, how many do you have? Uh, what, what is it at? 20 something. 20? You have 20 VW buses? Yeah, N- nice to see. Nice to see that I I, I toned down that whole uh, buying Hummers thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was such a kid back then. I didn't know any better. He's got twenty cars. <laughs> no, but what, so like what? So what does a VW bus go for? Like if you, are, if you it, get a nice one right now, <clears throat> uh, it can go anywhere from one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. Really? And so you buy them, and, and if you can find one that's kind of like trashed up a little bit you're like even one that's just a a hunk of junk man a lot of times people will pay big money just for the vin just for the vin number because it, it'll make it a of you know an original really? you can and build the- you can build a volkswagen bus they they sell all the parts and stuff and you can make one but it's if you try to sell it you got to let people know this is basically a clone yeah and it's you know it's a replica so it's not going to have the same value to a collector collectors are the ones that are going to pay the big money but you can you can make a bus for you know forty grand. So you see one. You have a guy. He hits mm-hmm. you up and he's like, "Yo, I got one." Like, I, I'm curious. What like what's the best state to get one from? Are there states where you're like California? Uh, uh you well, here's the thing too is that they can all the pieces you can remove pieces because rust is rust. These suckers yeah. are made out of metal. So I mean, the doors will be messed up or the floor you can see clean to the to the ground. Really? Yeah, because they're, they're rusted out. Everything can be replaced. So I mean, doesn't really matter as long as it's a uh, the style of the bus, uh, the right year, and like I said, the VIN if it's if it's uh, original. And then so, but you, you want California? For so me, want I California. want I want California because the weather conditions are better. Yeah, and so he calls you and he's like, "I got one." Do you just at look- this point I, we get together and I'm like, "Well, let's what's going to be the next color?" That's that's how we talk. What's going to really? be the next color? But right now I'm maxed out. I've officially I've maxed out the building. So you have a building. Do you go to the building often? I live in the building. Oh, I live. I live in. I live in my building. Uh, it's. I call it a one bedroom, eighty seven car garage. Yeah, because I have. I have a. Cars. <clears throat> you have eighty seven cars. I don't. It's, there's room in there if you side by side. I want to be like you. I like. I like. I. I don't have any um real passions. Like I like I when I f- first got into Travel Channel, she was like. Oh, shut the fuck up. I just saw that video. It's so beautiful. Oh, my God. I tried. My my goal was to build a museum. I wanted to build a museum, a Volkswagen museum. And so I put I put art on the walls. I, I you know, made the building look really, really nice. It's not you just have a convertible a, one. Uh, it's one with. the Yeah, you do. Just there's, give you a heads up. Nice. <laughs> These are beautiful. Holy shit. Man, I knew you I like I you, like you know things about comics and I knew you were into VW buses, but I was like 4 or 5. I didn't know that that you had that many. That is amazing. Jay goes uh 
he said, it's kind of boring, isn't it? It's just the same car over and over and oh, over. Oh, no, no, no. I, and I'm like, no. No, 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 no. That's where my no. brain would go. I'd want to do the same thing. My car my car is uh, Cadillac convertibles, mm. old school, like the 68. Comfortable, just a, a ship. I you want can one feel of those. the weight. When you turn, you feel the weight. It's just a boat. I, 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 I think I came into money too old where it's like, I should have made money younger where I could have had fun with it. Like Segura is younger than me. Not much, but a little bit. And he's <laughs> collecting cars. His thing's Porsches. He loves Porsches. Joe's, Joe's, well, Joe's had money forever, but Joe has a bunch of cars. Yeah, you know, Rogan? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. <clears throat> but man, so that's your house? Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's yeah, it's been my house for the last few years now. So wait, and that's, um, holy shit. Like, I would love to have all my fun stuff here. All my stuff, anything I have is in storage. Hats. That's what I fucking collect. Fucking I, I saw that. <laughs> I have a fucking, look, I just got a, a whole shipment in the other day. I fucking so many goddamn hats. By the way, I, I can't apologize enough for what I just did to your bathroom, dude. I'm sitting there. I'm looking. I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow, I can't believe this. I just <laughs> rough night. <laughs> what did you do last night? Uh, well, I was taping my show, but uh, afterwards, just hanging out, you know, having some drinks. And then, uh, yeah, it was one of those. Yeah. Normally, I could have slept it off, but we got up at like 6 a.m. And I'm like, whoa, why does everything hurt? I and I'm like, because like, I need, needed like three more hours. What a, to, so how, are you enjoying doing multicam? You know what? I enjoy I enjoy when the crowd's there. Yeah. I love when the audience is there because it feels like I'm on stage. Mm-hmm. Uh during the week it's work. It's work. So any any you know I, I, my hats off to people like Kevin Hart that can go out there and and hustle and grind because it's it's not uh, comedy to, to me is fun. Doing a sitcom you know, you're there. You got to do everybody's lines that they write for you. You got you got to rely on eight other people. You got it's there's so much happening and it's it's work. I love show day. Show day. It, it's it's it might as well be me on stage. Yeah. Because you get that vibe from the audience and you know you get that energy and that's what you need. Because trying to do jokes to camera people that don't or that aren't supposed to laugh. That's it sucks. Yeah. It's the reason I don't like doing a uh, uh, single camera. It's like I go. There's no fun in it. If I get it, you to laugh, that's when I knew I did a good job. It's like a movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, fuck that. I'd rather do a multicam where everyone can laugh, or at least break the third wall where the cameraman can be involved. Like you did. Uh, you did the show where you would go out, do big activities, and then and and then uh, trying to lose weight. What was the? Oh, 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 oh. And no, we weren't. Trust me, we weren't trying to lose weight. It was a. Uh, <laughs> the show was a uh, fluffy breaks even. The fluffy idea, breaks even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. idea was to go out. It looks like a fun. Show it was to shoot. that was that was fun until until it wasn't. Um, we'd go hit restaurants, and then the goal was to go and work out and see if we could work off the calories from that meal. It was a great... and every episode we were still in the red. <laughs> was, by season three, nobody could pass the physical. It was going downhill. Quick. No one could pass. Nobody the could pass the physical. <laughs> They're like, hey, we had three three seasons. So it was good to go. And... Nobody could pass the physical. Dude, my first physical that i ever took for a show this lady comes in and goes uh she comes into my green room she goes um all right so i'm gonna run through a list of questions uh do you drink and i said yeah she goes how much and i was like a lot she's like okay do you drink every night and i said yeah every night yeah every night she goes drugs and i was like yeah she's like uh which one so i was like well you know whatever's around really but like you know i've done it all she's like uh how often and i was like it depends. She was like, "Okay, I'm going to stop you right here." She goes, "You know, if you if you fail this physical, you don't get to do this TV show." And I went, "Excuse me." She goes, "This is to find out if you are insurable." And right now, you're not coming off very insurable. And I went, "Oh." And she goes, "So we're going to start all over." She goes, "Do you drink?" And I went, "Seldomly." <laughs> she was like, "That's there more you like go. It. There you go." Did the, the, they send you one of those Hollywood doctors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where they got headshots on the wall, right? Of all the people that went in there and. <laughs> Dude hit pause right now i don't want to fucking rat her out i don't want to she's the best she is the fucking best oh my god so is the multi-cam the the like when you look at in your career is that you i mean you've i don't think your career stand-up wise is gonna get i mean i don't know how it gets bigger you're doing the biggest venues that there are in the world i think right now the goal is to maintain 
I, I Dude, did, right? let me just let me just try to keep what I have and and hopefully it I can enjoy this for a few more years. How but do you, how do I, you maintain? I, I, like that's my that's my goal, and I don't like. I, there's a panic about it, like of like how do you, you're maintaining at a level that like a great white shark level. Like I don't know, like uh, that's fucking. You, your career has always been this, and then to be here, I can't imagine. I'm like down here and I'm like, just keep me here for a fucking two more years. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, what's your goal when you think maintain? What's your. So like when you're asking, do I like doing the the multicam or just having a show in general? It's, it, it's work. And if I could just stay doing stand up, that would be my my thing. I would love to just do nothing but that. Yeah. But uh, in order to grow, you you got to step outside the box and 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 do other things that will support what it is that I do. So if I do movies, that supports my standup. That's more eyeballs on me, more people with, oh, he's the guy, you know. Magic There's a reason right. why freaking Kevin Hart was selling out stadiums because, you know, he's got an incredible film did career. You, did you feel a bump Television from, shows. from like Magic Mike when you did that? Did you feel a bump in your in your touring? You know, uh, I did have people uh, that would recognize me that didn't know that I was a comic. That was different. Hey, I saw you in the thing. And I'm like, what the at the improv at the you know funny bone no you were with channing tay the thing with the strippers all like yeah. oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, yeah you got any other movies coming out i'm like well if you want to see i'll be here across the street you know here in tampa in ebor and <laughs> this weekend if you want to go see me <laughs> god but i i just know that uh to keep growing or at least maintain you got to stay relevant you got to stay relevant um but nowadays you got to be careful because any little thing like i I, th I feel like i'm one of the safest comics because i i avoid certain topics so i try not to ruffle feathers just to keep it cool people say oh this show's not edgy i don't care man look how many people showed up i wouldn't say that you know? i wouldn't it's, i wouldn't say your show shit's not edgy at all but but i don't know maybe i don't know what edgy is you know what i mean like i i i, I think if funny transcends edgy does that make sense mm -hmm. if you're making me laugh I'm not paying attention to the topic. Like, you make me laugh just as hard as Bill Burr makes me laugh. And I think Bill... Ah, oh, thank you. That says a lot. I appreciate that. Oh. Because Bill's, Bill's a... He's an animal. Yeah, man. He's an animal. And I'm like, I watch him and I'm like, I laugh. And then I'm like, ooh, let me check his feed. <laughs> let me see what people are saying. Cause... You know he's got no dirt on him <clears throat> because he takes swings where they would have gone. You know that Jezebel's gone through Bill Burr dirt looking for something. Oh, yeah you know that yeah yeah uh he's just been out there so long and he's so he's so just blunt i think if he did have dirt he'd be talking about it oh yeah oh 100 percent. i was in an uber last night going to the improv and my uber driver is listening to bill burr's podcast mm. and i was like i almost recorded it to send it to bill to go hey just so you know your fans also talk like this about women <laughs> i was like fucking cunts man cunts you can't fucking trust them dude they're fucking all cunts this guy's the oh only one that God. sees it that way and i was like i was like i wanted to go i'm friends with him he doesn't see it that way like <laughs> i think you're taking it a little too far sir <laughs> but would you do you feel like are there subjects where you go i'm gonna stay away from that yeah and again you talked about maintaining uh avoiding politics first of all because <clears throat> wow that's good I want to see him go down that road and get yeah. stuck to the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I avoid politics first of all because I, I don't. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not as as you know. There's some guys that that can do politics, but you you got to stay on top of it. I'm not educated enough about politics to to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'd rather just be like, you know what? That's not my cup of tea i don't get it every day something changes i'm not trying to pay attention let me just you know let me tell a story about me going to the park <laughs> so much easier and i can talk about that in a year yeah you know, and, and still be but it's it's also it's like i think that's the problem <clears throat> with with our country is that a lot of people aren't educated to talk about it and talk about it anyway yeah and, and i don't want to be one of those people so i'd rather just avoid it uh so I, i'll stay away from politics uh i won't talk about religion because religion you're going to upset somebody somebody's not going to like it yeah and and i i stay away from sports sports piss people off and they're very vocal about it really yes yes even in places where there's only one team people will still you'll still get a boo or still uh. yeah i said something about i was in kansas city and i had a oh wow that's what it was 
I was in Kansas City and I, I have a joke about our dog we rescued from uh Boyle Heights, mm-hmm. East LA. Right. And uh and I said a bunch of cholos spray painted her to look like a Raiders helmet. And the audience started booing so bad. Oh yeah, man. And I I thought they hated Mexicans. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, easy. And then I didn't realize I said Raiders. And I, and and I was like I was like calm down calm down and then and I was like do you guys hate Mexicans and they're like no no Raiders fans I was like same thing <laughs> <laughs> what's your sport <laughs> I want to get offended but I was wearing a Raider uh, jacket yesterday <laughs> <Are you serious? laughs> oh yeah but also too I mean you got you know it's uh it's that it's that division right it's uh it's the Chiefs Raiders. Patriots? Chargers, no, in that particular. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chiefs, Raiders, Broncos. Chiefs, Raiders, Broncos. Uh, is that the Chargers? So the the Chiefs and Raiders. Oh, that's a, that's oh, a yeah. big one right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your sport? What's your favorite football. sport? Football. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Are you in a, like a fantasy football league? No, uh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because a, a of commitment, my commitment, man. <laughs> dude, it was it it was overwhelming. I used to love it when I was on the road doing clubs. Mm-hmm. It was so great that Sunday. I just like doing the picks. Doing the yeah. picks here. Let's put twenty bucks in the in a little jar, everybody. All right, and Kane. Yeah. Here's the picks, and then we got it. You gamble? You know, I used to ga- I used to gamble when it was gambling. You I, like- I used to take rent and go to Morongo and let me see if I can, you know, come yeah. on, Sizzler. You know, <laughs> <laughs> come on. We're either gonna eat like kings or we're gonna have a hell of a month. Oh, shut <laughs> do- up. Dodging the landlord. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, when I gambled, it was gambling. I mean, it was like, oof. Like, now if I play or do something, it's yeah. it's for fun. Like, I'll, I'll bet on boxing. Like, a, um, I bet $1,000 on that last fight. It was uh, between Anthony Joshua and uh, Andy Ruiz. Uh, I don't, and, I don't follow well, boxing, yeah. You know, a, yeah. a, a thousand bucks. That's as crazy as I'll get. I'm not I'm not trying to go out there like Mayweather and freaking drop four houses on a table. And I'm like. Yeah, I, I only enjoy gambling when it. I only enjoyed it when it mattered, meaning like I was on a cruise and I only had eight hundred bucks. That's when it met. That's when I enjoyed it, and it doesn't mean anything to me. I'm mean, like not 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 saying I'm rich, but like if I put a hundred bucks down and I lose it, I'm like oh, okay. Like it, I yeah. want it to mean something to me. Exactly. Like when hey, when I would gamble when it was rent money. Yeah. Yeah. When it's like that's the only money you have. That's it. Oh, and you go back home and you're like, "Ooh, let's see what's in the freezer. What's you know, you're thinking you're doing the the inventory of what's in your in your refrigerator while you're gambling. When you when you're on the road, do you think I always <clears> have like a there's a, a an odd question. I apologize. But like when you're on the road a long time, do you have like a vision of what you want your weekend to look like when you come home? It's pretty routine. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um for the most part i just want to enjoy my dogs chill yeah hang out on the couch watch some tv grill no i don't even grill. i mean <laughs> i drive through really or if there's an opportunity to go hang out with some friends somebody's gonna do a barbecue like that i'm never home on the weekends yeah so you know that's usually when people would do that yeah that i mean it's it's crazy our lives are so i almost don't know how to function uh on the weekends like if i try to go somewhere it's like oh my god like I'm a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday go out guy. Like I'm used to yeah. yeah, I show up somewhere, there's parking. I show up somewhere, I get right into the restaurant. I show up somewhere, any table you want. You know, there's no the crowds. Like on the weekends, I'm like, this is bullshit. I can't find no parking. What the <laughs> what are these people doing here? You know, sir, do you have a reservation? I come here all the time. What do you mean a reservation? <laughs> He's sitting there waiting. Hey, can we take pictures? So now I'm doing a meet and greet in the freaking lobby while, you know. <laughs> That's it's so crazy. I, I don't I don't know how to function uh you know on the weekends. I, I gotta be out working somewhere. Yeah, that's it, it is interesting is that we've set our lives up. You know, it's so funny, me, you, Segura, uh, I wouldn't say Joe as much, but like guys that did the clubs and really stayed on the road, we all have basically the same life experiences, but we didn't do them together. We did them at different on different weekends. Mm-hmm. Like when you said Ebor, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, Tampa. <clears throat> no, yeah, I grew up in Tampa, but I never went to Ebor my entire life. My adult life, I've only been to Ebor. Like that's it. <laughs> like I've, oh, I never went to Ebor my entire fucking life, and but I've lived in Ebor my entire adult life. I only know Ebor. How funny is that? It's it really is crazy when you think about like people are like you've been to Omaha. And I go, oh yeah, a million times, but I've only been to that shopping center that the Funny Bones. Yeah, like I don't. I, 
Not like I don't know much about there, Omaha. There's, other than, there's some places I'm sure that, you know, you've gone outside the box or, or you got to really, go really like Columbus. I've only been to like Easton, wherever the fucking where, funny, where bone the funny is. bones at. It's a nice shopping center though, isn't it? I love and it. Then, uh, they got a uh, Tiffany's in there. They got a North face. Everything. That's a, one of my favorite. Dave Stroop is, is awesome. Oh, He's yeah. super awesome. A uh, club owner, just a sweetheart of a guy. It's the most soft-spoken dude ever. Who do you think out of all the club owners and by the way they've all like changed so much do you remember doc at dayton uh the funny bone no no doc's old school he was like the first he was like that first generation of managers it's, it's they've changed so much now the only ones that are still around are colleen and stroop wow i think and and rick in virginia beach rick bruner mm, i don't remember rick um tony baldino Oh, you're going like hardcore. Okay. I'm going old. Like I'm trying to think of like guys that. Yeah. Because when I think about a, a comedy club owner that's been around forever, somebody like a, a Mike Lacey. I don't know Mike Lacey. Mike Lacey Comedy Magic Club. I know Mike Lacey, but yeah, I, but yeah, I don't. I never did comedy magic. I can't go clean like you. You can go clean, like clean, like like clean yeah yeah <laughs> i can't do that at all i can't do that at all let me ask, when did you start doing the thing with the shirt because that's a hell of a i mean dude when you start you know going shirtless yeah. i'm like how freaking genius is that that's oh, such a, it's never been show. done and it was just one of those like all right it, it fits it's so like ah i was in i was in columbus i used to do this thing where i take my shirt off like just rip it off kill a beer uh-huh. and then put it back on and just start my show <clears throat> and uh i was in columbus one time and I took my shirt off, killed a beer, and then something happened organic in the room. And I started talking about it. And then like 15 minutes in, I realized my shirt was still off. And I went to put it back on. And this lady goes, keep it off. And I was like, nice. what? Is that what she sounded like? Yeah, I swear <laughs> to God. She goes, keep it off. So I kept it off. I did the show. I was working with someone. I can't remember who it was, but it was someone I respected. Mm-hmm. And I got off stage and they were like, dude, you just did an entire hour shirtless. And I was like, yeah, I know, right? And they're like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't think you understand. Like, I don't know if my act would work shirtless. In this weird kind of like fucked up thought, I had heard a long time ago that George Carlin and, and Richard Pryor, when they were working on material, they'd grow a beard. So that when they'd do their special, they'd shave the beard off. Mm-hmm. And then sh- shaved is much funnier than a beard, right? That was the, their theory. So that was like their their like weighted vest was this beard. So in my head, I go, all right, what I'm going to do is when I do the road, I'm going to do a shirtless. So that way, when I come back to the city or when I do a special, I put on a shirt. I'm, this this material will be murderous because if I can do it with a shirt off, then when I with a shirt, it's going to be so much better. <clears throat> I get a Showtime special. <laughs> it's like nine years later, I'm sure, whatever it was. I've been doing it for like, I've probably been doing it for like seven years shirtless. Mm. I get a Showtime special and they're like, you're going to wear a shirt, right? And I was like, I'm really uncomfortable in a shirt on stage. I hadn't been doing stand up with a shirt at all. at all. And they're like, well, I think you're going to lose viewers if you do it shirtless. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I'm like, if I, if I put a shirt on now, I sweat and I'm uncomfortable and I feel like I'm like, like you can see it. If I do stand up in a shirt, it is so awkward. I'm like, I don't move a lot. <laughs> like my arms thing still. And so I did it shirtless. And then I, and then once you did, I did that shirtless. It was like, it was like, uh, then all that's, it's almost like being the guy in the, in the, in the tuxedo that does stand up. Like everyone goes, oh, you're the shirtless guy. So then the next special Netflix calls and they're like, hey, we want to do a special. And I was like, great. And they're like, you're going to do it shirtless, right? And I was like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and 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 then the next one they're like we'll give you another one but you're doing it shirtless right and i was like yeah and then segura found that so fucking funny because he's like you realize like you're getting old like you're gonna be doing you're gonna be 70 years old doing some commemorative show at the mark twain giving someone a mark twain award and you're gonna have to take your fucking shirt off or everyone's gonna be like who the fuck is he <clears throat> and then rogan was like you know if you can't lose weight you can't lose weight and i was like mother like i i I definitely did not put a lot of thought into this fucking career of mine at all but it's not bad you know i i got recognized at a airport bar some girl was like hey i know you and i was like no she's like no i do i do this is like probably 
four years ago. Mm-hmm. I go, no. She goes, no, I, I, did we grow up together? And I was like, Tampa? She was like, no. And the bartender's looking. The girl's beautiful, too. She goes, oh, my God, I didn't recognize you with your shirt on. And the bartender's like, "Whoa, nice, brother. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I, I do stand-up shirtless. But you're, you, but you, and this is going to sound, this is going to sound odd, but you're the only comic I know that's ever done stand-up in shorts. Yeah. That's always been my thing. I've I've always been. Uh, I, you know what? I take that back. When I did my pr- first, you know, when I did a uh, premium blend, yeah, I wore pants. I wore really? pants and a regular shirt. I didn't have a Hawaiian shirt. I didn't have shorts. Uh, you know, I didn't have my my thing yet. But but it, it's so funny. It I I mean I I but like rec- I said I want to be comfortable. Yeah, I always want to be comfortable. And even now on the sitcom, I wrote it in. I'm a teacher that gets to. Uh, I'm a teacher that gets to wear shorts. Yeah, do you why <sighs> that it's odd too cuz no one was that a cognitive choice when you started wearing shorts or was it was like I'm going from home I I don't wear jeans at home I'm going from home to do stand up. Um well I, I had my 9 to 5 and you know I had to wear slacks and a nice shirt and a tie what was your and everything. Nine to five? Uh I sold cell phones. Really? I sold cell phones inside of a kiosk at a Walmart. So I did that for a while. <clears throat> and uh I hated wearing pants. <clears throat> Sorry, um, I just wanted to be comfortable, so I says, you know, hey, who's who's gonna tell me no? And so I started wearing the denim shorts, and that was just my thing. Oh, it's it's so. I mean, I have a hard time looking at the Jordan logo and not seeing your logo of the mic in the air. Yeah, that was uh, that was something too. That it was one of those. Okay, uh, I wanted to have a logo. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm and, the same way. And I wanted it to to be something that was like my stamp, and so. When the guys started putting it together, it was it, it. That's what it looked like, and so we needed to make sure that it was completely different to where oh, it's if, totally if somebody different. if somebody were to say, "Hey, hey, hey," and we're like, "No, no, no, watch, put one on top of the other." What yeah. does it look like? No, it, I, I, they're totally different, but but it's, but it's as that. recognizable. Like for me in comedy, mm-hmm. that is so recognizable. That in the shorts, and I, that, I guess Hawaiian shorts. I never really thought of that. It. Logo has hair. <laughs> I got yeah. That's what. The, Gave up on this a couple years ago. Um, yeah, having having that was another thing Dane had. Dane had that that logo. Yeah. So I was I said okay I need a logo, I need a logo. Gotta gotta have that and I have my thing. So I was always consistent with the shorts, consistent with the Hawaiian shirts. Every time I did a special, it was always the same look, so that you get, people get to recognize that. I I think that when comics start changing their stuff around. Um, I give my buddy a hard time because he can't decide. Does he want a beard? Does he want a mustache? Does he want long hair? Does he want short hair? Does he want to be overweight? Does he want to want to be skinny? He's a uh, vegan this year. Now, now he's killing cows. You know, he's, <laughs> so it, it's like, dude, you, you got to find one and stick to it because if you're constantly changing, people aren't going to get a chance to. You can't brand yourself. Yeah, when you when you go to do a new special, do you do you consciously challenge yourself to do something different, or do you go? You know what? Like, like how how do you write? My process for writing is I, I I've never been able to actually write stuff down on paper. I can't do it because for me that's like trying to follow the script, and I, I hate it. That's yeah. work. So I'll I'll have ideas of just like things that happened to me. Like for example, what what I did to your restroom. That's that's going to wind up on s- somewhere. I, I like not up enough the, people I shit in up people's houses. Dude, I took that, a that's shit. not cool. It's not cool. And I and I, I, I bought no. it. No. But I was like, oh man. Yeah. It was a rough night. I shit at someone's house down the street, Jeff and Colleen's house. These friends of ours from school, our kids' school. And I had just come back from Vietnam. I just flown back. I landed at like five in the afternoon or whatever. We had a they had a Christmas party. And we all get there and I was like, I I don't I've never I've never had a problem shitting at someone's house. Like it's, it doesn't, like I, it doesn't uh, click for me. I just go, hey, where's your bathroom? I'll shit at anyone's house. <laughs> I go, where's your bathroom? And he goes down. I go, he sends me the one downstairs, and I took a shit in it, and I apparently I fucked up their toilet, and they had to have someone come out and fix it. <laughs> oh man, no, I didn't do that to you. But no, but but in my head, I went, well, yeah, that that was your toilet. It wasn't me. Like I did what you're supposed to do in a toilet. And my I was doing backflips. And it. my wife's like, "You don't shit at someone's house at a dinner party." And I went, "Wait, why would they have toilets there then? Like, they have toilets for me to shit there. Like, I'm not doing something that you know that people shit in toilets. Like, I'm not doing something that 
<clears throat> unheard of. I didn't fucking flush drugs down it. Like, <laughs> I just shit in it. She's like, well, they had to have their toilet fixed. And I was like, they had a broken toilet then. It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> like, yeah, I just put shit in it. So, like, when it's funny when you came in and you I got to take a shit. I went, oh, finally someone like myself. Nice. I Because I, I, I will shit everywhere. Like, I... My, I love shitting in public restrooms. Really? I love shitting in public restrooms. Okay. <laughs> I love but you don't it. have the same, like, for me, I, I, I need I need to have that feeling of, of privacy, of knowing that I can do my business really? and be as loud as I need to be without feeling like, oh, what are the people listening? Like, oh my God, what happened to that guy? Is he oh, okay? No, no, no. Is he good? I love shitting in public restrooms. <laughs> My ideal is is like, uh, I, I'll say you give you the perfect scenario of me taking a public shit. Uh, five stalls, right? Lots okay. of stalls. One stall, I get I get anxious. I'm like, they knock on the door. I'm like, well, now I got to wrap it up. They don't even know how long I've been in there, but they knock on the door, and it's as soon as they knock on the door, I'm like, well, they must they know they know I've been here for 15 minutes. Five stalls, right? Uh, low toilets. I love low toilets. I hate high toilets where it feels like you're riding a horse while you shit. Nice. <laughs> Low toilets. Ideally, someone had just shit there before me, so the seat's still warm. warm. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then a guy in the stall next to me. <laughs> That's my ideal. I'm so happy. I get I get so excited. <laughs> I've taken I've I sh- I I mean I got famous for shitting on a pizza box in uh, on an election in Rolling Stone. I was written up in Rolling Stone magazine as the number one party animal in the country when I was in college. It was like a big, like six and a half page article. And uh, and my claim to fame was- a hell of a feat, by the way. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it's, it was the, it got me, it, it's how I started. I got written up in that magazine and then uh, Oliver Stone <laughs> optioned the rights to my life. I moved to New York. Uh, Will Smith read the article, discovered me. I got to deal with Will Smith. And that's how I got into stand up. I always look at guys like you, where I go, where I like, where I go, God, so you just thought you were funny? Like, I had all this stuff coming for me. So I was like, oh, that's naturally what I'll do. I look at guys like you and I go, you and Segura and Ari, like guys who just went, I go, so you were just sitting there and you're like, I just want to do this. I am so impressed. I I made up my mind at 10, at 10 years old, I says, you know what? I want to be a stand up. I saw Eddie Murphy raw and I says, I want to do that. I like, I liked how he walked out. I liked how the crowd reacted to him. I liked the material that he put out. I liked the characters and the voices. I'm like, I, that, that's what I, I gravitated to that so quickly. Um, I did a school talent show and uh, all I did was just voices and characters. I had no jokes, but the crowd was clapping and laughing that this little 10 year old boy's out there. And I'm like, yes. And it wasn't until years later, April 10th, 1997, when I actually kicked it off. But I knew, I knew that's what I wanted to do. April 1st, 1997 is when my Rolling Stone magazine came out. What a trip. Holy shit. I was 25. How old were you when you started? Uh, what, 20? Yeah, 20. God. So you're still young in this game. Uh, you just turned 40 the other uh, day? Um, fuck, 43. 43? How old am I? <laughs> That's when you know, yeah. <laughs> After a certain number, it's like, oh, yeah, forty three, forty three, forty three. God damn! So you've been successful for like twenty fucking years. I was very lucky that I I got into it, and it, it just it worked out. What was it? What, what was it like? Things have changed so much that now, uh... like I, I I remember, you know, I I came along when. When uh, making flyers was the way to get a show, you know, you, you you'd make your own flyers and you'd hand them out to people. Hey, come on out, check out my show. You'd put them on cars, and you know, so new, <laughs> I sound like one of those guys. These new comics today don't understand. You know what it was like? You had to hang out in a parking lot, looking like a creeper, trying not to get maced. Hey, you yeah. want to see a comedy show? Get away from me, asshole! <laughs> you know, and you put stuff on on cars, or you're you're fighting to get yourself on the radio. You're you're trying to get get yourself on morning news. Did you ever do uh, Pulin? Piolin, yeah, I'm friends with Piolin. Really? Yeah, I'm obsessed uh, with him. The, the thing is, is that my Spanish is is questionable, so I, I don't like I don't like going and doing Spanish interviews, just because I don't flow the same. Like my Spanish yeah. is freaking. I can order food at the taco truck level. Yeah, you know, I can and, buy drugs in Mexico. Uh, probably that's my Spanish. 
<laughs> I speak Spanish. I speak Spanish, but I understand Spanish a lot better than I speak it. Mm-hmm. Like I can, I can, if you say the word, I'll go, oh, I know what that word means, but I, but I would never think to say that word in place of what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, I'm trying to do, uh, Jesus's show in Spanish. Yeah. Tell the machine. You know what? There's uh, I've I've tried stand up in Spanish. I can do a solid fifteen. Cuando, After that, it's cuando viente dos años. Uh, I'm trying to find la Russo mafia. <laughs> Russian mafia. Yeah, I'm trying to tell that story. Oh, okay. In Spanish, but so he wrote it out for me, mm-hmm. and I I just need to. I, it's just I just need to see it with English next to it. But it's a fucking fifteen minute story for so for me to speak Spanish for fifteen minutes. That, that's that's very impressive. But yeah, to go on Piolin's show, he's a, he's a good friend. He's he's, I, a, he's a good friend. Me and my wife got obsessed with him and El Cucuy. You remember El Cucuy? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to. I love uh, Mexican radio. Or like, is it is it Mexican Mex- Mex- Mexican radio? Yeah. Is yeah, it yeah Latino. Because uh, uh, Cucuy, I think, was Salvadorian. Oh really? Was it, right. Cucuy was Salvadorian. Uh, Piolin Mexican. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Piolin por la mañana. Yeah, and he says, "Hola, Papa John, qué pasó?" <laughs> so I could do that for a few minutes, no problem. But then when you start talking, yeah, like I, I'm amazed how uh, how well uh, Tom speaks Spanish. I mean, I had no idea his background. Like you just see this white dude, and all of a sudden he's speaking clean as Spanish, and he gets all the nuances and just everything. And I'm like, wow. He one time he made a, j- a joke about Mexicans. This is a long time ago. This is when I found out he spoke Spanish, and this Mexican guy said something to him in the audience. And Tom fired back at him in Spanish. And the guy was shocked. And then Tom in Spanish says, oh, yeah, you didn't know, did you? Or something. And then goes back to English. And I get off. he gets off stage. And I go, you speak Spanish? And he goes, yeah. He's like, I'm part Peruvian. And I was like, what do you mean part Peruvian? He goes, my mom, her first language is Spanish. So we spoke Spanish in the house. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And he was like, I was like, dude, I would have leaned into that so hard. And he was like, well, no, I don't think twice about it. Now he's doing a podcast in Spanish. He's got, I mean, he's got, yeah, he's, his Spanish is pretty it's fucking. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. And I'm just like, wow, okay. There's a lot of people doing the stand up in Spanish now. It's just, you know. Could you do, could you do stand up in Spanish? Like I said, a, a good 15. A good 15? I've, go, I've, done, I've gone to Mexico to, to perform a, a little bit and I plan on going next year, but my show's going to be in English. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was it growing up as a kid looking at the stand up spectrum, which was predominantly white with a couple black guys and Paul Rodriguez? That was that was it. Yeah. Uh I would I would watch a lot of the Robin Williams specials. Robin Williams was one of the main guys too. I would watch. I'd watch Live at the Met. You're so much or, like Robin Williams or Howie Mandel. Like you got so many characters and and you don't f- I, I I never feel like you, your stand up is so it's i don't know the right word it's like so like guaranteed like when i when i watch you i don't feel like there's a tightrope i feel like you are you are i don't like some people i watch and i'm like oh this isn't gonna go well you don't have that vibe every time you so confident is it um you know but i i I do have some really oh stories have you bombed yes you have bombed um let me see would you call it bomb yeah you gotta call it bombing. i wouldn't call it bombing you don't know what bombing is Dude, miami improv fucking silence i had to follow steve trevino and he we were he was doing 45 minutes i was doing 45 minutes and steve was fucking like he was really putting the travino into his name it wasn't steve trevino mm. it was travino and the fucking place was loving him oh uh, ju- uh, uh como se dice flip-flop uh chakla Chunkla, yeah. Chunkla. Oh, you haven't the chunklas, and then the fucking place is going nuts. Steve's really leaning into his Spanish, and, and they're like, "Put your hands together for Bert Kreischer," and man, it was fucking silent. Like, I remember one time, sweat dripped off my face and landed on my chest, and everyone saw it. Like, you know that, like where it's running down your face, and they're watching it watching it and then it stops here and then it drips and everyone goes oh fucking i have eaten dicks on stage man i, I would have taken silence over what happened um i did a uh, a benefit for a it's kind of like a i wouldn't call it a pita group it was uh carol leifer you know carol leifer is? yeah she uh has this 
charity where it's dogs and cats. They're always they're they're raising money to help these dogs and cats get you know rescued, homes yeah. rescued, spayed, neutered, whatever the, whatever the case. So she hits me up and she's like, "Hey, would you um would you mind donating some of your time to come out and help my organization?" I go, "Sure, no problem. I'd love to." She goes, "I know you're you you love dogs." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." So uh, the function is at the Laugh Factory. And uh, it's three comics. It's it's Jay Leno, Tom Papa, and myself, and Carol's hosting. And so the whole group in the room is is nothing but dog and cat lovers. And Jay goes up there and does 15 minutes. He's got to go tape the Tonight Show, so he, he has to go first. And he does a whole bit about uh, how much he hates his wife's cats. And you can hear the whole room like, oh. You know, their asses are getting tighter. And at the end of his set, he goes, I'd like to donate $10,000 to your cause, blah, blah, blah. And and that already was more money than they were trying to raise. And so everybody's applauding him. Oh, my God, Jay Leno, you're the best. But I still hate cats. <laughs> so then Tom Papa goes up there and he goes, give it up for Jay Leno paying $10,000 to shit on cats. <laughs> and he killed it. And then I go up there and I'm five minutes in and my, I'm killing it. It's a great first five. I'm destroying and then I said, well, I should probably talk about my dogs. It's an animal crowd. And I started talking about my dog, Bruno, and how he likes to mark me. So whenever I'd enter a room, he'd come up to me and pee on my foot to let everybody know that I belonged to him. So I said, one day he peed on my back when I was on the couch. And I said, and I kicked him off the bed. And I, I did this thing where I went, I, I kicked him. I was like, Burr! so I just made the sound and I did the foot. Like I kicked yeah. him off the, you know, how do you kick a dog off a couch with your foot? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of people in there that, that didn't understand I was being sarcastic. And yeah. so some lady started calling me dog kicker and she got a bunch of people to rally. And I started getting called dog kicker by an entire audience. Carol Liefer comes up on stage and she hugs me like a, a referee. When a fighter's getting the shit knocked out of him, she yeah. goes, go. And I just, I bailed and I ran out and they followed me out to the curb. And this is at the laugh factory. You know, I have valet in the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to wait for my car. And now people are yelling dog kicker from the door. Are you serious? Oh, it was horrible. And it was on my 10 year anniversary, 10 years to the date. So April 10th, 2000, uh, tape, uh, April 2007. 2007, the actual 10 year date, uh, people were calling me dog kicker. And so the whole front row, the, the, the club was a bunch of people from media. So I recognized like Jane Velez Mitchell was in the crowd, people from KTLA because I watched the news. And so yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God, this is before TMZ. But I, I saw all of these, like my career dissolving right in front of me. Oh. Oh I'm being God. called a dog kicker in front of all these people. And I remember I was in my car and I was bawling. I'm like, I can't believe it. Uh, 10 years to the day. It was too good. I did this for 10 years and it's over. I, I didn't go up on stage for, for weeks. I was just so, it messed Are me up so back. I was, I was so used to just being consistent. And, and I, I don't want to sound like an asshole or anything, but I was, I did not know what it felt like to really not connect with the crowd. I didn't know what it was like to, to, upset a crowd so bad that that they would turn on you like that and i'm like oh my god you know now if something happens i'll make fun of the fact that something flopped or didn't work like i got booed in cleveland and that was an accident uh in cleveland um i was telling a story about how i was recently and i didn't even know i did this it was it was an accident i says yeah um there was these police officers and in michigan and 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 as soon as i said michigan the whole crowd just booed me because you know, Ohio yeah, State, yeah, Michigan, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I didn't know why they were booing me. And some lady goes, you said the M word. I said, I didn't say the N word. She goes, the M word. I'm like, what did I say, Mexican? And she goes, no, Michigan. And I'm like, oh my God. The M word, Mexican. And so that, they, it took me 10 minutes to convince the crowd that I was not trying to insult them. And this is a paid crowd. Yeah. You know, and so I'm, I'm walking off stage and I'm like, yeah, that's why LeBron left. You <laughs> motherfuckers. You know? I love I love that it's a misunderstanding. And then At the as end, comics, it's... we feel take it personal. And then we start going, oh, you want to fucking boo? I'll show you. I'll what show you what a boo is. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. But, uh, fortunately, I only have a couple that it made me question my career. You know, uh, usually the, the shows that go shit, uh, corporate corporate shows because it's it's you're a hoe yeah. you're a hoe you're a hoe you're a hoe i got i got a show next week i'm gonna be hoeing out uh <laughs> i needed a warm-up for staples yeah i'll take that corporate i'll yeah. take that corporate but it's just it's a whole play 
You get paid a bunch of money. It's not comedy conducive. You got to perform. Usually there's no stage or you're performing on a dance floor. The room is set up in a way it, where not everybody can see your face. The sound system is questionable. There's people serving food. Yeah. There's a guy who just gave a speech on freaking telemarketing. And then you got to follow the telemarketing speech. And uh, I had I had a corporate one time in Aspen. More money than I'd ever made on, on a show. And I remember the lady was like... Uh, She's like they're they're all hedge fund managers. Uh, they're really everyone's really really rich. So don't do any like anything self deprecating. They won't get like they don't get that. So like talk about talk about your watch. I had a Rolex on. She's like talk about your watch. Talk about and I was like, what do you mean jokes about a fucking Rolex? What do you think? I was like, oh my god. So I got up there and I start you know doing crowd work, busting their balls, and one guy they're like looking at each other and they're like. Hey man, just tell the machine story. And I was like, huh? And they're like, that's all. Just tell the machine story and then come drink with us. And I was like, that's all you want from me? And they're like, yeah. So, and so I start, when I was 22, I got involved with it. And they're like, oh, here we go. All right, this is it. So they tell the story and, and throughout, they're like, hang on, stop. I have a question. And I was like, sure. You did Q&A yeah, during your and set. During the, during the machine story, they'd stop me down, ask me questions, start it back up. They go, hang on, go back, go back. Do that Russian accent again. You sound a little bit like a vampire. And I was like, uh, yeah, I, I do sound like a vampire. I don't, I'm not good at accents. And they're like, all right, keep, keep going. They were just like so wealthy. The idea that that they weren't going to drive the evening was foreign to them. And so I finished it. And they're like, all right, let's drink. And then I went out and party with them all night. And that's all they wanted. They were, All they really wanted to do was drink with me. And I was like, all right, I can do that. I can do that very easily. I kind of feel like some of the crowds want me to do that now. Uh, yeah, for the most part, though, a lot of times when you do those uh, corporate gigs, they they do they do act like there's a certain level of entitlement. I was offered a stupid amount of money to basically be a court jester for uh, there was a, a Middle Eastern type, like he was a, a prince and his friends. And it was like his 17th birthday. It was like maybe 12 people. And they wanted me to just go. And they, I think the description was to uh, to humorously uh, pass out presents and, 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 and interact individually with everyone. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you, how do you do that? And and my agent, you gotta, you gotta give it up to my agent. He's just like, listen, Gabe, look, man, it's just saying, man, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's only 45 minutes. You'll be in, you'll be out. You know? And it was at a, uh, one of those hotels. I want to say like a, a super, it was a super high end hotel, like a, a Japanese hotel in New York. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's, but it's, it was, everything was first class all the way, but your court jester i could do that for a little i could do that i could definitely do that i'd rather do that than stand up uh, i'd rather do that hand I, out presents to everyone and make a comment hand, hand up yeah but it's like can i drink mm, i don't think that was an option but oh because oh, yeah. he's a prince yeah, yeah but it was this prince and i'm just like yeah no <laughs> yeah no and so i turned it down and he still he goes dude really I'm like, yeah, I know, but no. That's oh, <laughs> I do that in a fucking heartbeat. I'd rather, I'd rather sometimes when they do corporates and they just want you to be famous, and they, I was like, I would rather just hang out with them and not do stand up because I think the stand up's gonna let them down. So I was like, I'm working on stuff, you know. It's weird though when sometimes they're not very clear on the request, and then you know you get there, and then it's something that you weren't expecting, and you're like, oh shit, now we're outside okay yeah. no no now we're, we're we're in this room okay yeah uh, now i'm taking pictures with who uh okay uh, you know that's when it gets a little hokey can i tell you the probably the the biggest baller move i've ever seen in this business was you deciding to do last comic standing it, it made you you were already a millionaire you're way you're you're way past anyone on that show but you doing that was like a, one of those moves where I went, that's a, that's a fucking baller ass business move. And you know what? At that time, I felt like my career had plateaued and I hadn't done anything to, to take it to another place in probably two years. Because I remember having this conversation with someone where, where they're like, you're really going to do that show? And I go, what? I haven't done anything else. I got to try something. And, you know. That's how you felt at the time? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, I did. I have did I have money already? Did I already have a, a career when I did the show? Yeah, but it hadn't it hadn't changed. Like every year, I look at my okay. This is what I did this year. All right, is this year better than last year? Did I do more shows? Did I have more material? Was there a special? Was there how many TV appearances? What did I do to grow the brand this year? And I felt like I had a couple of years where I just I didn't do anything uh, anything new. To, to expand. I hadn't done any shows. And so when I did it, ah, so I'll tell you, uh, last comic standing, they put you in a hotel and you got to stay in this hotel. They want to keep an eye on you. You know, they want everybody to be there so that when they summon you to go perform, you know, you're, you're ready and they got you. And then once you're on the show, you're like the, you, when you're part of, part of the, the main group of people, they take away your phones. They, they, they make sure that you have no access to the outside world. I wasn't about that. I was not about that. They put us at the Queen Mary in Long Beach. I'm from Long Beach, so I already had ties and stuff. I was good. I get on the ship, and uh, I had bought like four cell phones. So I'm like, yeah, they're going to take one. Let me see if they find the one that I duct taped to my suitcase. Let me see if they find the other one that I hide in a sock. Let me see, you know, because they would go through your, through your stuff. Yeah. And so I had my cell phones in there because I wanted to stay in touch with the other. I wasn't trying to get jokes because that's yeah. what they think you were trying to do. Oh, for oh yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, no. Yeah. And I, I went onto that ship with like four grand in cash. So I was just, I was greasing everybody. I, all, the, all the guys that worked the, the restaurants there at the, at the Queen Mary. And so they would let me, they would help me sneak off the ship. I would sneak off the ship. I'd take the service elevator down. They had a car waiting Shut for me. Shut the fuck up. I'd go home, you know, because they had the cameras there, but it was one of those things where, you know, they, they were trying to keep an eye on, I forget, like 10 comics. And so, who's on your who's on your cast? Do you remember? Uh, Josh Blue. Josh Blue was the one that eventually won that, yeah. that season. We were roommates. And so they were always interviewing Josh. I was cool with that. No problem. But I didn't like being locked down. And so eventually they caught me with the cell phone. And that's how I got disqualified. And it was a good thing I got disqualified because if I would have won, they would have given me a comedy special on Bravo. That's that's what the, the grand that, prize was that, was that year. The com- yeah. Seems like a punishment. Yeah, I know. But anyways, I still go to the Queen Mary. They have a Sunday brunch, and I still run into all those guys that I used to freaking, you know, take care of. Really? Yeah. So, so yeah, you got we got to get going. Ah, uh, shit. Okay, yeah, I have a TV yeah. show. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sorry. we'll wrap it up with the with the. I would just real quick. What was the what was the pop like after last comics? All us comics, candidly, every comic that felt like they were a little something was like last comic standing is beneath me. But you went on, and everyone knew we were you were well above. I remember all of us. that because even I was like, ah, ah. Yeah, now, all get, of us were like that. But you went on, and we were like, I remember going like, I, I, everyone's like, why is Gabe doing it? And then everyone's like, oh, I bet his touring's about to explode because he is a legit comic about to show everyone what he can do, and that is not that that show just hadn't had that yet. So getting disqualified from that show gave me an extra bump I bet. That, 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 that push. Uh, I think any comic who, who came in second or third wound up doing better than the person who Ralphie. actually won. Yeah. Ralphie prime example. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, good times on that show. <laughs> Dude. I, I'm so, I'm so, I could, I could literally talk to you for another hour. I'm so grateful that you came to do this. I know that you're busy as fucking shit right now. And for you to take a minute to do this, it, it means a great deal to me. Thank you so no, much. Bro, man. This is it's about time we get to actually talk. And you know, it's like I'm I, I follow you. I follow you online. I follow the the battles be, between you and Tom and your buses. And I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, they're pretty you know, one sided. Guys- it's just me destroying him. <laughs> and he'll see. He'll see. He's fucked with the wrong. He's he tugged on the wrong tiger's tail with this fucking dance video because now I have a show. I have a show on Netflix that we're in production, and I can't stop thinking of comeback videos for Tom. And then, and then, like I'm thinking about wasting an entire episode's budget on fucking with Tom. <laughs> I'm fucking god damn it, dude. But, but do you understand how cool that is? Because I mean, to to have uh to be friends with someone that you can be that way with is yeah. is awesome. You know, I don't have somebody like that that I can. I mean, I could I could talk a little shit with Joe Coy, but then we both yeah. feel bad, and then we go eat waffles. And we, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry that I made fun of your head. And yeah, it's okay. Pass the sausage. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 
but you guys go hard. I mean, when I saw that video of him doing the the dancing and then he's shanking a, a, a really fucking like basically you know me with your head and he's shanking that dude and he he won't stop i'm like this is so like they're trying to like just blow the ceiling off you know it's it's awesome i've all but uh set up a pedophile scene with for, for, for the next video for Tom. it's yeah it's it's fun it's been it's i i get a kick out of it like I, there's it's the i think right now is the funnest time to be a stand-up because there's no real rules. Networks for us are, have changed to just Netflix. You know, we don't, none of us are, I don't even know what CBS is programming. I don't know. Like they're all the, everything's gone. All the rules have changed. Yeah. As a stand up on, on Netflix, uh, you have full creativity. A hundred percent. You know, you don't have to worry about commercials. Cause I remember doing a, a special on comedy central and it was one of those, the edits, they, they would mess up your jokes, man. They chop up your bit. Uh, they cut it off right at the setup and now you got to watch four minutes of stovetop stuffing commercials and then it comes back and it, you can't even remember what the setup and it's yeah. like ah! yeah it's it's a great time to be a stand-up and, then, and and the fact that like this would have never happened 10 years ago like me and you just hanging out in a room for an hour and a half now with podcasts it's like i feel like you can forge friendships because everyone's everyone is out to help each other does that make sense like the the old Mencia uh, yeah. Lopez shit is kind of crabs fading. in a bucket. Yeah, <laughs> crabs in a bucket. Like no, 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 me first. No, I got this. Yeah, uh, I feel like I'm in a really good place now where I, I have no problem trying to help someone else. Trying to, hey man, if I could offer advice or taking people on the road or giving suggestions or or you know, I, I'm I'm there. I'm I just want to maintain. When's your podcast? I don't have enough to say. Bull I, I honestly, fucking shit. I honestly don't have enough to Bull, say. You to, could do to, a podcast just on professional wrestling. I, I probably could. <laughs> <laughs> on VW Bugs. On VW Buses. I, I just feel like I. it's a it's a skill to be able to be, uh, be on a microphone and just talk and not have instant feedback. If you're one-on-one with someone, that's one thing. But if you're, uh, if you, there's some guys that have podcasts and they just, it's just them. And they're only talking, like, they won't even talk to the dude that's running the, the board. They're just having a conversation, and I'm like, "How do you do that?" You could do that very easily. Ugh. You could definitely. You should try it. You should try it. I think it'll. I think. I think it would be, could be with the amount of voices that go on in your head and nice. <laughs> like just you could have. You could do a podcast with all your characters, and just. I mean, it, you you're you're set up for it. You are. You could do old school radio with all the characters. With just you, I'm telling you, man, you got to do a podcast. It, I could probably do one, one good one. <laughs> I, I, having a ra- dude, that's a commitment, bro. That's <laughs> ah, I got, I got, I got to go take a nap. <laughs> Speaking of commitments, I'll get you out here for your TV show. Your TV show on Netflix is fucking phenomenal. Thank you, it's, dude. Anyone doing multi cam on Netflix, I, I'm like, that's my goal. That's my goal. I would love multi cam. It's just so set up for what we're good at is live studio audience. Yes. So congratulations on the set on the sitcom. Thank you, Bert. And and dude, I'm telling you when I say this, since when I taped that premium blend and I saw you murder on that stage, you've been w- one of the goats my entire career. And yeah, thank you for saying that. Your specials have all been phenomenal. The way you've handled yourself in business, like the like, no one says has a bad word to say about you. Anytime you go to a club, every all anyone says is how fucking generous you are, how you like to have a drink. I like, I, and I love anyone that likes to have a drink. That's number one. Like, I, I, you let me know. <laughs> we got We got to get drunk. Together. You let me know. Let Let me know. Can, we, will, can that be the second, uh, you know, podcast interview? <laughs> hey, done. We'll schedule it. We'll do like a late night podcast, and we'll start drinking. I'm in. I'll t- and I'll bring the podcast to you if you want. We'll you know, yeah, bring it to the building. We'll bring it. To, we'll bring it out to the building. Hulse and I'll come I'll be, out. I'll be close to the bed so I can pass out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do that. We'll set that up. Next podcast, we'll come out to your place. I'll bring some tequila. Yeah, you like tequila? Yes. I fucking love tequila right now. I'm going through a big tequila phase. Oh. <laughs> I'm going through a really big tequila phase. <laughs> Last night was pretty rough. I threw. Up, I almost threw up in my mouth at 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 the improv. I took a shot of tequila and it just was like. Oh, it's it's right here. It's right here. And I was like, "Does anyone have gum? Does anyone have gum?" And this lady's like, "Your breath smells fine." My wife's like, "He's about to throw up." I was like, "Oh yeah, thank yeah. you, <laughs> dude. Congrats on all the success, and thank you for doing this. Thank you. 